Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we're comparing 2019's AMD Radeon RX 5500 to last year's 6500 XT. Why? Well to see how they're holding up and whether or not either is worth it in 2023 of course. The 5500 is an OEM version of the 5500 XT but it's basically the same spec wise and will offer near identical performance to the 4GB XT model which is far more common on the used market. The 5500 XT is available in a 4 or 8 gigabyte variant and so is the 6500 XT believe it or not. There's an 8 gigabyte sapphire model available but it's extremely hard to find at least here in the UK so for this test I've gone with 4 gig versus 4 gig. The 5500 has 8 PCIe lanes and offers PCIe 4.0 connectivity. The 6500 XT has 4 PCIe lanes and also is a PCIe 4.0 card but using it in a PCIe 3.0 system may result in lower performance depending on the game played. I'm therefore testing both cards in both PCIe 4 and 3 modes today in a 4 way split screen comparison. I'm not expecting as much if any difference with the 5500 in PCIe 3 and 4 modes but there may still be differences so keep an eye on those results as well. So first up we have the Witcher 3 at 1080p medium. Now for the PCIe 3 results which are on the left side of the screen, the 5500, the older card, was faster with 85 FPS on average compared to 79. On the right hand side of the screen, the PCIe 4 results, the 5500 was again faster than the 6500 XT, this time in PCIe 4 mode. But the fastest card of the day here in the Witcher was the 5500 in PCIe 4 mode with 87 FPS on average, which was 2 FPS above the same card in PCIe 3 mode. In Forza Horizon 5, we saw 80 frames per second for the 5500 in PCIe 4 mode, which was the best result in this game. Compared to the 6500 XT, this was 4 frames higher, but with PCIe 3, the 5500 pulled ahead again, this time with 12 frames on average higher. So again, better results here for the 5500 in both scenarios really so the older card definitely still holds its own and in some cases it's better than the 6500 xt the newer gpu for hogwarts legacy we have the medium preset this time the results were pretty close across the board which is what you'll see on occasion with all of these cards as they are quite similar in performance both of these cards sorry in PCIe 3 mode, the results were near identical across the board in terms of the averages and the percentile lows. And with PCIe 4, the same can be said, though the 6500 XT did suffer a little more in terms of that 0.1% figure. But again, if I didn't have the frame counter, I really wouldn't have been able to tell a difference between any of these results. And it was surprising, to be honest, for all of them. I think this card seems to favour AMD GPUs, at least it does in my experience. There seems to be a little bit less in terms of stutter and frame dips, but that's just an observation that I've made with my test setup. Now, in Fortnite, the only card that couldn't hit 60 FPS at medium settings was the 6500 XT in PCIe 3 mode, which fell short of the 5500 in the same mode, which scored 64 fps on average and got better percentile lows we saw some weird dips with the 6500 xt in pcie 3 mode here dropping to 30 fps at one point which was quite off putting the best result of the day however was actually the 6500 xt albeit in pcie 4.0 mode so all hope is not lost for this card and it did the best here with the second best result being the 5500 in the same PCIe mode at 70 frames per second. In The Last of Us Part 1 at 1080p lowest, of course here the RX 5500 came in on top with 52 frames per second. For the 5500 and 6500 XT in PCIe 3 mode the results were very similar indeed and to be honest the same can be said with the PCIe 4 results 52 and 48 fps on average respectively for both 
cards. The best result of the day though, well, it does go to that 5500. Now you'd probably be better enabling FSR for this one in order to retain a higher frame rate overall. The same can be said in a few titles actually. Finally, we have Cyberpunk 1080p with the low preset and the high crowds. This is a more CPU intensive setting, so I left high crowds enabled. The best result was with the 6500 XT here in PCIe 4 mode with 67 FPS on average. The 5500 also did very well, and there's a pretty small difference between the frame rates in PCIe 3 and 4 modes here. Whereas with the 6500 XT, um, quite a large difference between the two modes, which is something you also notice in other games as well. However, I was surprised to see that the 5500 was also affected performance wise when I switched from PCIe 3 to 4 in the BIOS, which is something I wasn't expecting, even though the results weren't always as significantly different. The 5500 and 6500 XT were both fastest in 3 out of 6 games each when running in PCIe 4. The slowest card of the day was the 6500 XT in PCIe 3 mode, coming last in all but one test, which it tied with the 5500 in PCIe 3 mode. The Last of Us apparently doesn't like the older PCIe standard as much it would seem. The 5500 or XT is probably the better buy if it's cheaper, especially if you can get the 8GB version for less than a 6500 XT as well. The 6500 XT is a more tempting buy than it was a year ago for sure, as prices have dropped, but if you can stretch the budget to an 8GB 6600, which honestly aren't that much more in some regions, then I'd get that. I've seen them at about £30 more expensive than 6500 XTs when looking on the brand new market here in the UK. And on the used market the price difference is similar. You won't regret spending the extra at all. An 8GB RX 580 should also be considered. More VRAM dirt cheap prices right now and likely better performance, especially in an older PCIe 3 machine, means that the 580 is still one of my go-to recommendations for a low cost but pretty capable 1080p card even in mid-2023. At this point in time, the 6500 XT is still quite difficult to recommend because even though prices have fallen this past year, the prices of everything else has as well. If you do buy one and you have a PCIe 4 compatible machine, you might be pleasantly surprised by some of the gaming results for sure, and it remains one of the cheapest graphics cards that you can buy brand new apart from the slightly worse 6400 and the abysmal GT710 of course, the absolute legend. Not much else fills the 150-ish price point right now on the brand new out of the box market, but in instances where I'd have to choose between a new 6500 XT or what is currently a lower price 580 or GTX 1070 for that matter, I'd go down that road and then not have to worry about the lack of hardware encoding, bandwidth limitation, and whether or not 4 gigs of VRAM will annihilate all my hopes and dreams of getting consistent performance, but that's just me. Overall, I hope you've enjoyed this look back at the 6500 XT one and a bit years later. I um, thought I'd do a little bit of an updated video just to see how this thing is getting on. If you enjoyed it, Leave a like down below, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.